Welcome back to our video series about the EQ Lighting Application Suite 7.0. This time we will talk about the DALI functionality in the Lighting Application Suite with focus on DALI input devices. The last video was about ballasts. Now we will see how to handle input devices like buttons and switches, motion detectors and light senders. See the last video number 12 how to set up and configure the DALI system in the program. This part will skip in this lesson. First, let's have a look at the current configuration. Today's configuration is a little bit more complex than the last one. We have four ballasts for constant voltage LEDs. We have one key coupler with four connected buttons and we have a sensor coupler with a multi-sensor. The sensor is a motion detector and a light sensor in one in one housing. So in fact there are two devices here and we'll see this later in the DALI manager. All four ballasts are connected to the daily line A of the Ethernet to daily. All input devices are connected to line B. Of course you can have ballasts and input devices in one DALI line. And one command here regarding light sensors, they are not defined today in the current DALI standard. For this reason only OSRAM sensors are supported. And as they require constant polling, you should not have too many of them in one DALI line, let's say a maximum of eight. The DALI manager is already open and you can see that all devices, ballots and input devices have assigned short addresses. To do this, use the one icon in the top to address ballasts and the other one to address inputs. We already had this in the video about ballasts. Buttons are sometimes referred as keys in DALI. And buttons are the most simple input devices, so there's not much to configure in the DALI manager. But you can see that pressing buttons will give different output values depending on how long you press the button. For example, if we here have the button number 1, you see the current input is 0. If I press the button a shorter time, it gets a current input of 1. If I keep the button pressed, it gets a value of 4. And if I release the button now, it gets a value of 7. So there are several states of the button when I do a short press or a long press. But you don't have to deal with it. The trigger engine will handle these two different types of use of a button. Let's close the DALI manager and open the automation to see what you can do with DALI buttons. So I close the DALI manager and I open the automation window and I will now create a trigger with a DALI button as a source. So I click Add Trigger and the trigger is a DALI event. The event source is an input. The device is my Ethernet to DALI. And my keys buttons are on line B, I take the input number 1. And now in the field event type you can see that here you have a selection of pressed, long pressed start and long pressed stop. So if you press the button for less than a second you get on key pressed. If you keep the button pressed for longer than a second you will get a long pressed start and when you release you will get a long pressed stop. I use just the simple way and what I want to do is now to connect an action. I take in this list, you can use any action from the list. I take a DALI command on Ethernet to DALI. I don't use a ballast, I use a group, group 3 of fixtures and I use the command intensity. And I want to set in this case the intensity to 100%. So now the trigger is the input, a simple press, and the executed action is setting intensity in a group to a value of 100%. Now if you want to use the same button to shut down my fixtures, I could create a second trigger rule. And I take the same key, but this time I say a long press start. And in this case, I connect an action and set the intensity to 
So if I click the button short time, then the whole group will be set to full value. And if I do a long press, it will be set down about 10% intensity. So this is the way you can use the buttons as sources for actions and triggers. I return to my DALI manager. So here in my DALI manager I have my inputs 1, 2, 3 and 4 and it says it's a plug and play type, it's a button and switch input. Now if I take the input number 5 then you can see that it has another icon in front and in the list you can see the plug and play type motion detector. So the DALI manager identified this input device as a motion detector. And as you can see again there's not much to configure here because the behavior of motion detectors and light sensors are defined by input rules. So it is the time to create my first input rule for the motion sensor. I click on input rules, add input rule. And now here I have my input rule. I give it another name. I call it my motion detector. And the device is my Ethernet to Dali. It is line B. And the motion detector is input number 5. And the input type is motion detector. You can now set two parameters for the motion detector in this input rule. The first is the so-called end event time. A motion detector provides two events. The first one is when the motion starts and the second event is when the motion ends. And this end event time is the time which is between these two events, the motion start and the motion end. I will use a smaller value of 10 seconds. So if somebody moves in front of the motion detector, then it will send an event start and a motion start. And after 10 seconds, nothing else happens, it will send a motion end. And this is the time frame. The second parameter is the re-trigger start. So if something moves, then it will send a motion start. If now in, in this time frame of 10 seconds something happens again, then it will re-trigger these 10 seconds to start again. So you have a constant change of motion start and motion end events. So what can we do now with the motion detector? I close the DALI manager, go back to my trigger engine and I create a new trigger. And this time it's again a DALI event and on line B, but the event source now is an input rule. And the input rule is my motion detector. And this trigger will be executed on motion start and motion end. That's not what I want. I want to have this trigger only on motion start. So when the motion start event comes, I select the action. Let this time take the group again, but this time the group number two. And when the motion starts, I use the intensity command and I use a value of 100. So when the motion starts, it will set group number two to 100%. I create a second trigger, but this time I select the motion end. So if the motion end event comes, I want to set my group to 10%. So that's usually what a motion detector does. If something moves in front of the detector, it will switch on the light. And after this time frame of 10 seconds defined in the DALI manager, it will then get the motion end event and then shut down the lamps to nearly 10%. This would be one example how to use a motion detector. So I close this again and I open the DALI manager to come back to my light sensor. So with my light sensor here, again, nothing much to configure and 
the behavior of the light sensor is also defined with an input rule. So again, I select input rules and I create a new input rule. And now this one is called my light sensor. The device And the device again is the Ethernet to Dali. It is line B. And now the input this time is the light sensor, which is input number six. And now here we have a list of parameters for point A, point B, adjustment speed, current input, current output, target output. These values are read only, they are grayed out. And what is meant with these four parameters, we will have a little graphics to show what these point A and point B mean. With the points A and B, you can define how input values, which is intensity for light sensor, and output value are mapped together. And you do this with these two points A and B. At first you define the point A, which says with an input value of 10%, an output value of 90% is provided. And the second point, for example, the point B, says with 80% of input, an output value of 20% is provided. So this would be the usual way you map intensity and output value for a light sensor to control the lighting in a room, for example. The darker it gets, the more intensity on your fixtures you want to have. And below and above this point A and B, the value is as a limiter used to control the mapping from input to output. So I entered some values here for point A and for point B. You can also select the adjustment speed. And this is the speed how fast input values are transferred to output values. You can have very slow reaction, which is usually possible, for example, if you use daylight to control intensity in an office, or you can use a fast adjustment if you use this light sensor as a kind of motion detector. So this is the speed, how fast input is followed on output. For example, if you take uh, fastest, and if I now change the light input of the sensor, you can see in the grayed out field that the input and the output value changes. So I now want to use my light sensor as a controlling point for an action. So I close the Dolly Manager, I open the automation window and I add a trigger rule. And this time I do not use the input rule, my motion detector, but my light sensor. Again you have here the motion start and motion end. They don't mean anything here for a light sensor. And the connected action is now I select group 1 and the command now is again intensity, but this time the value source is the input rule. So there's nothing else to define because the values for high and low intensity are defined in the input rule. I use value source input rule and then now the group intensity will be set to the output value of the input rule. So I have now defined a reaction for my light sensor. So getting it all together, we have as inputs, we have inputs as switches or keys or buttons. We can have motion detectors and we can have light sensors. The keys or buttons are just used to trigger actions and for the motion detectors and light sensors we have the input rules which define the behavior of the sensor or the detector. For details and for some examples and 
for more information, please have a look at the manuals available at www.eq.com or www.tracksandtechnologies.com. The uh, system manual for the lighting application suite also describes all the parameters that are listed here and how they can be used. Again, this video was just a short overview to give you an idea what to do with DALI and the DALI subsystems in the lighting application suite.